everyone. My name is Sharon Platt and I am a science tutor with the Student Success Commons. Today I would like to go over the brain. So there's our brain. So just to orient you a little bit, this is the anterior side, front side, that's the posterior side, superior, inferior. So the first thing we want to talk about is the lobes. And the lobes go by the same names as the bones of the skull, so that makes these quite easy. So first we have the frontal lobe, and it actually goes all the way back to here, all the way back to these red lines. That's your frontal lobe, and so that's here. And we have the parietal lobes right here, and the occipital lobe right there, it's back here. And of course, the temporal lobe is right here. So then the next most important thing <coughs> is these bumps. These are kind of like little mountains and valleys. The mountains are a gyrus, gyri for plural. So we have lots of gyri, one gyrus. And then the valleys are a sulcus or sulci. So we have a lot of sulci. So you've got gyrus, sulcus, and this is the main one. This is the central sulcus, which divides the frontal from the parietal. Then we have the longitudinal fissure. It goes right down the middle, splits the brain in half, including the frontal lobe. It goes right down the sagittal suture, but it continues on. And right now we are going to split. No, nope, we're not yet. On the inferior side, this little bump right here, that's the pituitary, the pituitary gland. Remember in the skull, we had the cella tersica, it was that little saddle thing. That's where the pituitary lives, that's how important it is. It has its own little bony structure to protect it. So that's the pituitary, and we're gonna ignore him for now, and we're gonna go to this here. The optic nerves come into here. They come from, obviously the eyes are here or somewhere. They come down here. And then it forms, and it's really hard to see here, so please look at the pictures in your book. Uh, they will give you a much better understanding of this particular structure. Some things are much easier to understand here, some are much easier in the book. It's really best to look at both. But this forms a little X. Kind of comes down like this, and then down like this. So, this is the optic chiasma, that X is an optic, is the chiasma, where the two nerves cross and go to opposite sides of the brain. And you'll learn more about that when you cover the eye. So we have the optic chiasma, and then we have the optic tract. Once it's in the brain, you've got your optic nerve coming in here, once this crosses, then it becomes the optic tract down in here. And then we have the olfactory bulbs, these here and the olfactory tract. Once again, olfactory bulb is where the nerves come in, and then the olfactory tract is where it's in the brain headed toward the thalamus, which we'll talk about later. And if you remember in the skull, remember the little cribriform plate up in that frontal area? And in it were all these little holes, the olfactory foramina, well, the nerves from your nose literally go up through those holes, those olfactory foramina, and into this olfactory bulb. Can you see the little dots there? That's, that's where they go. So the nerves go into there and then transfer it in there. And now we are ready to take this apart. If I can get it. It's a little stubborn. Okay. All right, here we go. So here's half of the brain. This is the middle longitudinal fissure right here. And we all know that our nerves combine into the spinal cord and the spinal cord goes up into the brain, right? So our spinal cord comes up here and then this part here is the medulla oblongata. This is the pons. And this up here is the midbrain. Now you will maybe learn that term very much um, very fascinating things go on in the midbrain. I won't get into that now. 
The only thing that you might need to know is these are the corpora quadrigemina. Well, half of it, because this is the half of the brain. If you dissect a sheep's brain and you take it and you pull it apart right here, you will see four little dots down in there. Those are the corpora quadrigemina. So there's two on this side, two on the other side. So spinal cord, mid, um, medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain. And so everything comes up there and goes into the thalamus. This right here is the thalamus. And also the input from your eyes and your nose comes and goes into the thalamus. This is the gateway to the brain. All input comes into the thalamus and then is sent to the part of the brain that processes it. <clears throat> so this is the gatekeeper. It decides what stays, it decides where it goes, all of that. That's the thalamus right there. And then below the thalamus and toward the front, toward the anterior side, is the hypothalamus. And if you don't know how important the hypothalamus is, you'll learn next semester in AMP2. Um, incredibly important part of the brain. Controls very much of what we do. Then back here, we have the cerebellum. This is what it looks like from the posterior side. From the inside, it looks kind of like a tree. Here's your trunk, here's your branches. Um, that is your cerebellum. And then we have the corpus callosum here. This is incredibly important. Some people actually don't have this. Look up videos on this. It's absolutely fascinating. Some people don't have this. And they can literally draw two different things with two different hands because one eye is seeing one thing and one the other in the hand and that eye work together. And most of us can't do that, thankfully. <laughs> Um, this is what helps us coordinate our movements. Everything comes together and the nerves from both sides of the brain connect there. So that is corpus callosum. It looks kind of like a C if you turn it sideways. Corpus callosum. Then we're going to look at the ventricles. Um, actually, let me switch halves for a moment. So a ventricle is basically a fluid-filled hole. Um, so this is one lateral ventricle here. And then the other is, of course, behind here. This is the septum pellucidum that separates, it's a membrane that separates the two halves of the lateral ventricles. And they are actually, I guess, one and two because the third ventricle is here, but we call these the lateral ventricles. We call this the third ventricle. So we have those. And then we have, there's a little hole down in here. There isn't actually on this model, but in a real brain, there's a hole here. And it brings the cerebrospinal fluid from the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle, which if you cut a brain in half like this, the third ventricle disappears. Be sure to look in your book at this as well. Um, the view of the ventricles from the front and from the side, fascinating. Um, but the third ventricle is here, split open, we can't see it. But this little hole is called the interventricular foramen. So it's taking from the lateral into the third ventricle, interventricular foramen. So we have lateral ventricles, interventricular foramen. Uh, third ventricle is here in between the two halves. Then we have the cerebral aqueduct. See this little channel here? That's the cerebral aqueduct and it goes down into the fourth ventricle. And again, look in the book because this makes the fourth ventricle look small, it's not. Um, from different angles. It's, it's very interesting. And then it goes down into the spinal cord and then back up and around, which we will cover all of that in another video because that is an intricate and detailed process. So that is those. Then we have, ah yes, the choroid plexus. The choroid plexus, you can't see in this model at all. Even in a sheep's brain, it's very difficult to see. It looks like a bunch of little gray or darker gray bumps in the sheep's brain. The choroid plexus is what creates the cerebrospinal fluid. So there's a lot of it in the lateral ventricles. There's also some in the third ventricle here and the fourth ventricle, but most of it's in the lateral ventricles. Creates the cerebrospinal fluid. And then there is two more little things. This here is the fornix. So you've got your corpus callosum up here, 
This little guy down here going the opposite direction is, is the fornix. And then this little bump right here, if you follow the fornix down and then you look for a little round spot, that is the pineal gland. So that is the last two things for the brain.